It used to be called graffiti. Now it's known as street art and it's gracing the walls of some of the best homes in Melbourne and it's selling for tens of thousands of dollars. Some of Australia's best known street artists took their work from the laneways to the well-heeled Melbourne suburb of Armidale this week for a special exhibition. Cheryl Hall went along. A lot of the time I do these characters, these men that are sort of downtrodden and melancholic people and I think the idea of dressing them in a little costume like either as a bunny man or you know like this morning as a ladybug man it gives them that sense of joy and frivolity that's always the glass half full and for me that's sort of my outlook on life is you know, things are always on the up so it, it gives them a sense of relief um yeah, takes them out of their everyday kind of struggle. Stormy Mills may have failed art at school, but his graffiti is now changing what may soon be taught in class. He's part of an international art movement that's being bought up by the big collectors. Well, it's really grateful, but yeah, it's um, it is very humbling that some you know when you paint something on a wall and. 24 hours later it's painted over by somebody um, the fact that somebody would come into a gallery and buy it to hang in their house is like, yeah, that total juxtaposition that yeah, it does make you think wow this is pretty awesome Like other street artists Stormy Mills has been painting in far less salubrious surroundings since he was 14 When I was 14 years old and going out at night painting if I'd been stopped from doing that early on, then I probably wouldn't be here now. And I think that would, you know, for me, it would be a great shame. I don't necessarily think that um, people were so much against it. I think there's a very vocal minority that applied that pressure um, for, you know, graffiti to be illegal and and to get rid of it and all those other things. But you know, the amount of kids that are out there painting it. They're, kids with parents and I'm sure their parents wouldn't want them arrested for doing, for creating artwork. One thing informs the other. I still paint a lot of walls. Um, I would learn something when I'm painting in the studio that I then go out and paint on a wall and vice versa. Ken McGregor has taken five years to put the exhibition together. Not an easy task when most street artists want to remain anonymous to avoid fines and even jail. Deface and Banksy, that, that, that's the, not their real names. Um, you know, I happen to know quite a few of their, their names because I've been involved with them over the last you know, five years in particular, but they, um, they have false names and false bank accounts as well because they, can't, they don't want to be tracked back just in case they get caught for, for work that's previously done you know, several years ago. Some of the artists, like Paris's Black Lorat, have been around for years, but it's only recently their work has become valuable. The rat, well, that's just the first image that he was uh, that he ever did in the late 70s, the small rat that he littered the streets with of Paris, and it was a, a comment of um, the dirtiness. And he's often making fun of things. So he's got uh, David holding a machine gun here. This is um, one of his very famous iconic images of the beggar, and obviously there's a huge amount of poverty in Paris, and he's um, commenting on the fact. Swoon is in her early 30s, so she's. Um, had a huge amount of success for a young artist. She's based in New York, and she'll um, she'll do. This is one of her well-known images. She actually pastes it up on the wall all over New York and LA. Melbourne artist Haha is well known for his images of Australia's famous outlaw Ned Kelly. He says it's a revolutionary image that fits well with street art. It's one of the greatest. Um, billboards that you can have on the street. You don't have to actually go into a gallery. You don't have to pay a fee to actually go and see the work. It's there. It's all over the place. 
and um, that's what these street artists do. Melbourne is becoming famous for its graffiti, a reputation it has tried to obliterate in the past by cleaning up the city and painting over it, some of it well known. This Banksy, the tiny rat with the parachute, was in Hosier Lane in Melbourne's CBD until early this year when a council cleaner painted over it. Oh, oh. Ken McGregor called that cultural vandalism, but he also acknowledges that street art is not permanent. Places like Hosier Lane are so popular, work is constantly painted over by other artists. These images by Stormy Mills have now disappeared too. I think you have to let it grow as well. Melbourne is the street capital of Australia and it has the respect of all the great street artists and Deface and Banksy and Black Barat. They've all been here and they've all stenciled the laneways of Melbourne. So internationally it stands up just as good as, Paris, as, as London does, just as good as New York did. I think the best thing for Melbourne is to give the kids some more laneways to, to do because the, the amount of tourism that's generated from it is huge as well. For the artists, it's about the ability to immediately engage with the community. There's a, a real sense of freedom as well, I think, painting a wall because you know it's, you know, ultimately it's transient. It's not going to last forever. And it kind of frees you up to work a bit more fluidly and more relaxed. And, and I learn a lot by doing that that, you know, I, I'd wish... It would be as easy to paint canvas like that sometimes. Cheryl Hall with that report. And that exhibition is on at the Metro Gallery in Armidale. And we should clarify, it's only legal to paint on approved sites around the city.